amazing people I got to work with. If this is not God, tell me who. Really, like, I came to a completely a place I'd never been to before, into like a village, which is what Basel is, where there's no one. But I met this amazing team. Hoku and Basel has changed my life. <laughs> That sounds so serious, but it is true. Lisa, Nigerian passport holder. It was a long story. And my dad was like, what's the point? Just stay in Switzerland, because my school is in Switzerland. Um, what's the point? Just stay there. Why do you have to go to Belgium? And my mom and I were like, let's just try and see. And then I came and look at the amazing... <laughs> So tell me, are, are you ready for your internship? I don't think I am. Hi guys, welcome to this video. If you're new to this channel, my name is Moyo and you're so welcome to Shibite. I'm sure you've already seen quite a few videos from my internship series and today I'm going to be continuing. I'm alone today because I'm actually going to be telling my own story about my first internship, my first three months at Hofkuvan Basel. So, the first thing I have to get into is I'm doing a series all about master talent internships. Those are internships that happen in Belgium in a range of restaurants. Some of them are Michelin star, some of them are not. Michelin starred, <laughs> some of them are not. But basically, master talent is an amazing organization that links us up with restaurants where we can come and work for three or more months, even less, um, at, on internships. So if you're interested, I'm going to leave all their details in the description box below. And I also have lots of interviews from other people who came here around the same time that i was here to do internships so you can also hear about their stories and their journey great so first of all i want to talk about deciding why why master talent for me and why hofku van basel as the first one i wanted to go to so first of all um when i was trying to choose my first internship where i went to rosewood abu dhabi you can watch that video if you want to also i'll link it up or down somewhere <laughs> um so when i went to my first internship I was also looking at master talent around that time and I was like okay maybe for my second one so when you know IRF which is like the international recruitment forum came around again I was like fine let me just email master talent tell them what my interests are and see how this goes so I actually did not um, I didn't know anything about Hofku van Basel I wanted to go to restaurant veranda which is my second place which I'll talk about a bit later um, and I wanted to go there because two of my friends had been there they told me about it and I was like okay this seems like it's a bit up my street and I actually wanted to go to patisserie Manus initially because I wanted to do half pastry and half um, cuisine so I got confirmed for restaurant veranda for the second half of my internship because for the first half they already had an intern so for the first half of my internship, I wanted to go to Patisserie Manus. However, they did not provide accommodation and that was already a big thing because you know that if you're coming for a master talent internship, you're not going to get paid. And so having accommodation is kind of important because you're already spending all your money, um, what is it called? Providing yourself in other ways. You don't want to have to pay for accommodation. Also, you don't want to have to look for accommodation. Some people do it, but I wasn't really willing to do that. So I started to look for different places. Now, Mr. Yippeman, who is, you'll see, he's, he's, I've already also done an interview with him all about Master Talents, which you can watch. He sent me a few suggestions, and one of them was Hofke van Basel. I know I cannot pronounce it well, but I'm trying, Hofke van Basel. Um, and Hofke van Basel is a one mission starred restaurant in Basel, in Quebec, however they pronounce it, in Belgium. That is like 20 minutes by car from Antwerp. And... He sent me an email, maybe I'll put in the email here, and he said to me, Hofko and Basel focuses on vegetal cuisine. I don't know why, but the word vegetal stood out for me. Like, I can't explain why. 
and I remember someone speaking to me about the whole vegetable cuisine thing and I was like wow this is really interesting I will learn how to really process vegetables because in kitchens a lot of the attention is usually on like the meat or the fish or other ingredients and vegetables can be kind of pushed to the sidelines but for me some of the most amazing fine dining meals I've ever eaten have been where you know the vegetable or the starch have just been pushed up so much and it just makes the meal so much better so I said to myself yes I want to look into this restaurant I went on their website the pictures looked really nice and I was like I have no idea where Basel is but I'm going to Belgium anyway so I don't have to be in a city so I also applied for Hofkrum and Basel I got the confirmation and I was like okay fine let me go so when I got there it is a very very beautiful place that's the first thing i have to say hofu and basel is so so beautiful it is literally opposite an amazing beautiful church um the restaurant itself has a very amazing like cottage feel which just brings everything together it is super beautiful i'm going to show you pictures and everything so when i first got there i actually arrived on a saturday evening which is like the worst time to arrive as you can imagine it was super busy and it was one of their busiest days in the whole year so i just got there um and then i met a few people there gina who is the owner she was like oh my gosh i can't believe you're here now but you know i'll show you around a little bit and then they'll take you to where you're going to sleep and you'll come back tomorrow and we can start from there First of all, she on the next day on Sunday, she really gave me a breakdown all about what Hofka and Basel is all about. And I really appreciated that. I really appreciated being sat down and told all about what this restaurant is about so that I can immerse myself properly and I can flow with like their values and their ethos. She also like explained to me who everyone is, what they do, why they do the things they do, and she was very interested in what my interests were and if i'm truly interested in gastronomy so first of all i really appreciated that so that is basically all about my welcome all about you know how i first got there now i we used to work wednesdays to sunday um yeah basically and my hours were what you would expect i started work at 10 usually one on saturdays and nine on wednesdays because we had extra meals on plus and we usually finished from 12 to 1 30 ish those are my hours initially like my first day i was really tired because i just came back from exams and yeah but i got used to the hours over time i lived in the restaurant actually because they have two luxury suites and they have this extra suite where i used to stay um it's a suite it's a room um but you still have access to the rest of the restaurant especially in your off days and you can basically move around now the next question i would like to answer is what did i expect if I'm honest, I did not have a lot of expectations. I learned from my first internship that sometimes expectations are not really positive because they sort of set you up for failure. Like they get you hoping for things that might not materialize. So I was just really open and willing to see and learn and understand. On my first day, like the chefs will always call me to come and see what the dishes were. And I also really appreciated that so I could get like a holistic view of what the restaurant was all about okay did i have any fears or worries about this internship not really i mean i was moving to a new country first time at a one michelin starred restaurant as at any michelin starred restaurant so i was working there so i was a bit worried as you can imagine but i was just willing to go in there and see what i could do now if i can describe the food at hofku van basel this is how i would describe it gina is the owner and she's a vegetarian so they have a lot of focus on vegetables. One big thing that makes um, Hofka and Basel different from many restaurants that might focus on vegetable cuisine is the garden. They have a beautiful and amazing garden that is huge. Like, you know when someone describes to you, oh, we have a vegetable or a herb garden, you're like, okay, like a small space, like someone's backyard, no. This is purpose built and very functional. They also have a nature consultant who is in charge of the garden. They grow everything from artichokes to pumpkin to all the herbs they use in the kitchen like sorrel like so much of that i didn't go to the garden much because obviously i was working in the kitchen but we received herbs and vegetables from the garden all through the summer while i was there things like zucchini things like um as i said before artichokes were always coming from the garden um and we we incorporated we incorporated them into the dishes that we were cooking 
One thing I really learned when I worked at Hofkov and Basel was the use of herbs in food. They had a really, really large focus on using herbs because obviously they had so many herbs from the garden. So, so many herbs. I, I cannot even. And um, they had to be used in a way that was purposeful and that complemented the food. How And I also really learned how to garnish food with herbs to make it look like it was natural, make it look like a garden, not make it look too structured or symmetrical and that for me was really really important so the garden is so 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 beautiful and it's very interesting to know how you can incorporate things from the garden into your into your um, cuisine how to wash the vegetables properly to ensure that there's no insects always checking them to ensure that there's no insects in them to ensure that they are of a good quality to ensure that they're of a good um, an optimal taste and to ensure that they complement the food that you are working with so that for me was very very interesting we use herbs in everything from the amosis to the dessert to everything you can think of and they were always trying to plant new ones get new ones and yes the second most important thing i learned was initiative the chefs at hofke van basel really really how do i explain this how do i word this they use the initiative to sort of like the maximum basically they use anything that they can to make what they want to do to take their cuisine to, to the next level like for example they had these barbecues that they used to put the langoustine on to serve to the guests and they were like these mini cute barbecues and you think oh my gosh how much did those cost where did they come from they were literally made from taking a round tin crossing it in half and putting a barbecue on rack on top of it so they were very creative and even just before i left they wanted to change the way they did their mousses and they got these like um planks and they basically impressed gina's choice on them by themselves isn't that so amazing <laughs> um so you have many of those amazing things that they did that i really learned from they were always trying to do new things um what's it called create new things using seeming, um, seemingly unusual equipment or um, ingredients and so I really really benefited from that whilst I was there now the next thing I want to talk about is do I have any advice for anyone who wants to work at a place like Kofko van Basel the advice I have is to be willing to give your all because it's a place that requires your all Kofko van Basel is a small restaurant I think the busiest busiest we ever were in Hofke because actually there's two restaurants there's Hofke and Basel which is the one mission starred restaurant and then there's Basalia which is the um what's it called which is the Italian restaurant and actually I haven't spoken about my role so I should do that first what did I do as an intern there I did a lot of stuff for Basalia because I guess it's easier for them to put an intern on that because it's a lot simpler food so I did the antipasti and the appetizer and the dessert for Basalia, doing the mise en place and the plating for a lot of it and then I also did amuse I also helped with I helped Massimo <laughs> with the amuses and the sorbet for what is it called for Hofke and I also majorly plated the desserts for Hofke so that's basically what I did um, I learned a lot about organization I learned a lot about having about planning and making sure that your order your order list is complete especially on saturday because we don't get any deliveries on sunday because everything is shut on in belgium on sunday so i had to make sure that i ordered everything on saturday for sunday did that always happen no actually i, I had to make, make sure i ordered everything on friday so it would come on saturday and be enough for saturday and sunday did that always happen no but i learned i learned how to manage fridges i learned how to check mise en place i learned how to organize myself and i have so many people from the team to thank for that um so back to do i have any advice for someone who wants to work in a place like this yes i do i would say that because of it's a very small restaurant it's a very small team so i feel that you have to be open honest and you have to use initiative what does that mean come willing to be yourself and to like I don't know why melange is coming to my head and come willing to be yourself and willing to blend and flow with the frequency or with the way that they do things and i feel like the fact that you know that everyone is working as hard as they can pushes you on i learned so much from every single person who works in that place i learned a lot from the chefs who were there from the service from the extras who came on the weekends to help and i learned something about having singleness of mind and being able to 
ensure that your team also understands the way that you work i saw people come and go but i saw people who were staying and willing to stay and i learned things from people who were there for one day and people who were there for the entire time i was there the last thing I want to talk about is how has my experience at Hofkov and Basel shaped my dreams and aspirations in the culinary world. One thing that I learned that has really helped me understand where I want to go is pushing your own philosophy to the maximum. Whilst I was there, um, they were really trying to ensure that they push their philosophy to the maximum in the sense of things like, for example, the last main before I left was based on duck. But usually what you'll do for your sauce is base your sauce on your duck jus or duck um, stock but what they were trying to do was base their sauce on a pumpkin juice on like juiced pumpkin because they were trying to be more vegetable forward because their whole ethos and philosophy was about vegetables they thought what's the point in basing our sauce on meat when our our point our philosophy our ethos is vegetables and that was something that stood out to me and they really tried to explain it to me one thing you have to be sure that you know about yourself in this industry is what do you stand for and how do you push what you stand for to the maximum and that is so very important there is no point trying to stay in between trying to pretend trying to be who you are and trying to still mix with what the general trend is there's no point so that's one thing that i feel like has really helped me to clarify what i want to do in the future there's no point pretending there's no need for pretense you can be bold in who you are and tell the world this is who I am. If you like it, if you're interested, come. If you're not, it's fine because I know who my my audience is. I know who my target is. I know who I'm working towards. I learned so much from speaking to all the chefs. I learned so much from working with them. I learned about precision, about speed, and about so many other things. And I'm so glad and grateful I got to work at this amazing, amazing place. When I finished there, my mom said one thing. My mom said. You didn't know, first of all, when I was trying to get my Belgian visa, <laughs> Nigerian passport holder, it was a long story. And my dad was like, what's the point? Just stay in Switzerland, because my school is in Switzerland. Um, what's the point? Just stay there. Why do you have to go to Belgium? And my mom and I were like, let's just try and see. And then I came and look at the amazing people I got to work with. If this is not God, tell me who. Really, like, I came to a completely, a place I'd never been to before, into like a village, which is what Basel is, where there's no one. But I met this amazing team. I had to live there, I had to live with them. If I hated it, it would have been like suffocating for me. But I was able to love it. And I was able to see how they love and treasure the people that they work with. How they care and how they push. And really, I learned so much about life from living and working with them. And I'm so grateful to all of you for having me. I will definitely come back and see you like as much as possible as I can. And yeah, Hoko and Basel has changed my life. <laughs> That sounds so serious, but it is true. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I can say much, much more, but I don't want to ramble. I want to try and make this, you know, a good length for you guys. So thank you for watching. Definitely check out my other videos in this series and my other videos about food, faith, and lifestyle. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! <laughs> if you haven't seen it already, they made a beautiful video for me on their Facebook page when I left. I Moyo sore, moyo sore, moyo 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 sore, moyo sore, moyo sore, moyo 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 sore. Hey moyo, thanks for doing your great internship here. We all love you. Yeah.